let's review factoring. When factoring polynomials, we always want to factor completely, meaning factor until the polynomial is prime and cannot be factored anymore. You always want to check for GCF first or the greatest common factor. When the polynomial is a binomial, which means it has two terms, look for dots, which is the difference of two perfect squares. Or if it's two terms and it's not dots, check for the sum and difference of perfect cubes, which we use the acronym SOAP for in order to help us remember the signs. When a polynomial is a trinomial, which means that it has three terms, you're going to look for the AM method or the AC method, and that's when there's a leading coefficient. And for four or more terms, you're going to check factoring by grouping. Start with groups of two. If that doesn't work, try groups of three. Or sometimes you need to reorder the terms and group the first and the third term together and the second and the fourth term together. When the questions look more complicated, you want to look for structure. And there's another challenge video to look at those. So remember that we're always going to check for GCF first. In example one, 16x to the fourth, plus 54x, these can both be divided by 2x. So I'm going to put a 2x on the outside and divide. 16 divided by 2 is 8. x to the fourth divided by x is x cubed. Plus 54 divided by 2 is 27, and the x's are going to divide out. What's left over in here is a binomial, and everything is a perfect cube, so I'm going to use SOAP. I'm going to bring down the 2x on the outside. I'm going to set up a binomial times a trinomial, same sign, opposite sign, always positive. If you need to show work on the side, the cube root of 8x to the third is 2x, and the cube root is of 27 is 3. So those are the pieces I'm working with. Those cube roots go in the first parentheses, so 2x plus 3. Then 2x squared is 4x squared, which goes in the next spot. The product of them, 2x times 3, 6x goes in the next spot, and 3 squared is 9, which goes in the last spot. So this is my polynomial factored completely for example 1. Example 2, there's no GCF, and there's a trinomial, which means it has three terms. There's a number in front a coefficient in front of the x squared, so I'm going to do a times c. So six time, 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm now going to multiply to 6. So I either I'm going to use 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. I'm going to bring down my two outside pieces, 3 squared, 3x squared, blank, blank, minus 2. We're going to split this 5x into two pieces, and the terms need to combine to give me 5 back. But how do I know what to choose? It's either 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. It comes from these pairs over here. I'm going to use my sign trick where I bring down the first positive. Positive times a negative is a negative. So that means I'm going to choose 6x and 1x. Now I have four terms, so I'm going to factor by grouping. My first two pieces can both be divided by a 3x. When I take out a GCF of 3x, I'm left with x plus 2. This sign always comes out for your next pair. This grouping has a GCF of negative 1, and I'm left with x plus 2. At this point, if my two binomials don't match, something went wrong. They do match, so I have x plus 2, and I have 3x minus 1. Remember that in order to check factoring, you could always multiply back out. So if I wanted to check on the side over here, I could do x plus 2, 3x minus 1, and when I multiplied it back out, I should end up with my original question back. Moving on to example 3. Once again, I have no GCF. I have three terms, and I have a leading coefficient. 
So 7 times 3 gives me 21. So it's either going to be 1 and 21 or 3 and 7 that I'm going to choose. My outside pieces of 7x squared and 3y squared are going to come down. I'm going to use my sign trick for my two blank spaces. Plus, plus. Both terms are going to be xy terms because I'm splitting up the 10xy. So I need to multiply to 21, which is my a times c, and I need to combine to 10. So it's going to be 7 and 3. If you're using the sign trick, I forgot to point that out in the last question, your bigger number always comes first. Four terms again, so now I'm going to factor by grouping. In my first two terms, a 7x is the GCF, so I'm left with x plus y. In the next two terms, 3y is my GCF. I'm left with x plus y. My binomials are the same, so I have x plus y times 7x plus 3y. So don't be intimidated when there are two variables. Just apply the AC method and it works itself out. Example four. Right away, I notice that there are a lot of terms here and there's no GCF. So I'm going to attempt to factor by grouping. It may look like you want to combine like terms here, but many times combining like terms makes it more difficult. So I'm going to start by attempting factoring by grouping. If that doesn't work, then I would go ahead and try to rearrange or I would go ahead and try to combine my like terms. I like to start two at a time. If that doesn't work, then I try three at a time. Then I try rearranging. So if I start two at a time, my GCF here is k squared. When I take out that GCF, I'm left with k squared minus 4. In my next two pieces, my GCF is 8k. So if I take out a GCF of 8k, I'm left with k squared minus 4, and it looks like I'm on the right track because my binomials match. Last two terms, 48's a big number, so it might be hard to figure out the factors in your head without a calculator, but remember, you want it to be k squared minus 4 left over. So the first thing I'm going to look for is that I probably have to take out a positive 12. And 48 divided by 12 is 4. All of my binomials inside the parentheses match. So that comes to the front as my first binomial. And then my other three pieces come together as the second factor in the trinomial. Remember that you always want to factor completely. So I have to check, do either of these or both of them or neither of them factor further? k squared minus 4 is das, difference of two perfect squares. So k squared minus 4 becomes k plus 2, k minus 2. My next factor is a trinomial, three terms, no leading coefficient. So I'm going to apply the AM method. Each parentheses gets a k. Bring down my first sign, positive times a positive is a positive. I want to multiply to 12, so my options are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. I'm looking to combine or add to 8, so that's going to be 6 and 2. Bigger number comes first. So you can leave it just like this, or what you may notice is that k plus 2, that factor, is repeated, so you could list this out as k plus 2 squared times k minus 2 times k plus 6. And that'll be important for us when we get into polynomials and graphing because that will reveal multiplicities and other things like that. So just something to keep in mind. So this is a review of all types of factoring thus far.